The Salvation Army began its work in the Caribbean territory in 1887. This ministry extended to the country of Haiti in 1950, where today the Salvation Army in Haiti operates 48 schools and 60 corps with over 6,000 active soldiers. Often the Army is operating in the least served and most dangerous areas. If we were at a supermarket or some meeting with other organizations, they'd ask us where we lived or where we worked and we would tell them. And the look on their face, you could see that there's no way they're going to go into that neighborhood. But the Salvation Army is in that neighborhood and has been there for uh, 60 years. The Salvation Army doesn't only go into that neighborhood and work, the Salvation Army lives there. When we were stationed there, we lived in that neighborhood. Officers live in that neighborhood. And we really, um, we service an area that is under service because people are just afraid of that. Those people love the Salvation Army because we're there because we're not afraid to be there, because during all the coup d'etats that Haiti's experienced, and they've been many when violence has been rampant, uh, the Salvation Army has served in that community. It's never left that community. So I'm really proud, uh, godly proud, of the Salvation Army's work because we do go where other people won't go and uh, serve populations that other people won't serve. As the poorest nation in the Western Hemisphere, Haiti has often struggled, however, Things got much worse when on Tuesday, January 12, 2010, a 7.0 magnitude earthquake struck Haiti, forever changing the landscape and the lives of its people. Over 220,000 are believed to have died, but since many were buried in common graves, the true number may never be known. It's estimated as many as 300,000 people were injured, and it could take as much as $14 billion to rebuild the damaged areas. This makes the Haiti earthquake one of the deadliest natural disasters in modern history. So uh, on the day of the earthquake, uh, I was driving down the, the, down the mountain from Petionville. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't figure out what was happening, all happening very quickly. And, and then I looked at the windshield and could see, actually see the road twist. I mean, you, know, you saw the ground move and that was so, so bizarre. Um, and, uh, and then it registered with me, this is a quake. I, I yelled to the other people, get out of the, get out of the truck, and, uh, and they did. We, we got out into the street, and, and as we did, the, the quake stopped, and the buildings started coming down, just one after the other, and, and everyone was out in the middle of the street. Nobody wants to be near a building, not sure if it's going to fall, not sure if there's going to be another quake. Uh, uh, you're hearing people cry, and, and presumably some people are finding their people perhaps buried in debris. The, the earthquake was devastating to Haiti and um, I, I actually went down a week after it was, uh, the earthquake uh, happened and um, a lot of the talk by people who didn't know, by people who didn't know Haiti and had never been there were that we need to rebuild Haiti, we need to get back to normal in Haiti and the, the hope of the people of Haiti and the hope of the Salvation Army is that we can make a new normal, is that through uh, this devastating um, earthquake that just destroyed so many lives, that from that rubble can be built something that was better than it was before. My hope for Haiti, and I think everyone's hope for Haiti who knows it, is not that they return to normal, but that normal gets better. And we're serving more and more people every day, serving them ways we never dreamed we'd be able to. Uh, we couldn't have done it without the resources of our friends uh, and new friends from around the world. So to all of those people, to every person who has volunteered to pack a bag of food at Numana, or uh, every school child who has made a picture or, or made a contribution of money to uh, children in Haiti, to every Salvation Army officer and soldier and advisory board member and volunteer, Every person, we, we, we can't thank you enough. Your, your expressions of, of God's love have, have been received here and, and, and they're being developed here. And, and the very thing that we would want to happen in all this is that people would come to know the love of God is happening in an amazing way. So we, we just want to say thank you for your, uh, your participation and your support.
un média lucien, la martinière, à me déduire le commandeur à la télévision. I was right here. Exactly where I was when I fell the earthquake. Right here. And I walk through this door. But now there's this door. I walk through that way. I get through those street, mm. up to the street. Before uh, those can happen. So I don't know how that, how that happened because when I got to the street, I went to look for my wife. I didn't even know what happened to the house because my first thing thinking is about my wife. I went for her. When I get back, I saw really what happened to the house. I didn't know because I just went away. I don't know. Maybe an angel take me out because even now when I go, I can understand how come I can get in some second out and the gate was closed and the gate opened. After that, when I get back, they still locked. When I get here, the earthquake push it this way. I don't know. They open it this way and I get through. And in the afternoon when I get back, it was closed the way it is. <laughs> When I get into the street, I see some of the neighbors crying, and I hug the sisters that live in the right across my house, and they told me everything is okay. So as my wife was not there, I went to for her to see where she was. When I get at the house, they told me she is okay. She went home. She got she got home before me. She thought I was inside of the house because she saw the house completely. This wall, she saw the car outside. And she was asking for help. After 15 minutes, we met in the street, so both of us were happy. And now we spend the night in the street. I tried to call Bob and see what we can do. Tomorrow, I walked to the issue and start working to see what the Salvation Army can do for the people. After three days, I went to see the house. I, I thought everything was lost. I found my passport. All our ID cards just by the gates. It seemed that someone took it inside and put there. But it was the more important thing for us. But what I think is the same God who preserved my life. I don't have to be care, uh, care for myself because I always say to my wife and anybody else, if I'm alive now, not because I'm smart, I'm strong, or I'm a good man, because of God's just what to be for me to be here today. That's why I'm willing to go wherever it's the same wealth everywhere. As divisional commander, Major Lamartinaire had housing at his disposal. However, he and his wife chose to live in a tent in the DHQ parking lot so that all available housing could be used by volunteers and staff. This is the kind of servant leadership World Services supports. I'm Ketia Diaz, um, I'm from Haiti. For me, um, my life there, it's, I can speak more about my life in the Salvation Army because that was, that was it, this is where I grew up. Um, my mom and dad um, put me there when I was three years old. So that's the way I get to the Salvation Army. Um, it was a good thing for my family because they needed that help um, to support me. And this is uh, where the Salvation Army really become a big support for them and for my life. Because now when I'm looking at my life and my family, I realize I was really privileged to be there because my sisters and brothers, they, my mom and dad, I can see them really struggle to put them in school, struggle to give them food to eat. While me, when I was in the Salvation Army, had that privilege to go to nice school. I had food and everything I needed. My mom and dad, they have five kids, and I was the only one to be at the children's home. I can see my sisters and brothers struggle so hard. And I started to see from my sisters and brothers that Jaws is come, when Steve come, and he started to see those things too, in the ki those kids that we have at the children's home. So we started to think about, it should be another way to do that. 
and we started to see the other way we can do that is to see if we can help all the family together. If, if there is no giving, no sponsorship from other country, I don't really think the work could be done in Haiti like that. We use those money for a lot of things because you, you, you help kids go to school because there's no, there's not a lot of public school in Haiti. It's totally, it's everything is private. In the children's home, we had 50 kids. We pay for school for them. We pay for medical and all those things. And the salvation, I mean, even when they took one kid in the children's home, a lot of time they keep pay, they pay to for those sisters and brothers to go to school and for houses, things like that. And on top of those 50 kids we have at the children's home, we had 200 others family that the Salvation Army support. Without the support from World Services, the Salvation Army will not be able to do the work in Haiti. As of August 2010, the Salvation Army World Service Office reported nearly seven million meals served, over 7,000 baby bottles distributed, and one and a half million gallons of water provided to the thousands of displaced individuals looking to the Salvation Army for aid. The work of the Salvation Army in Haiti started long before the earthquake of January 2010, and the work will continue long after the headlines turn to other events. By the grace of God and the resources provided by World Services funding, the future of Haiti is optimistic. Well, the Salvation Army in Haiti is uh, 60 years old. It is the largest Salvation Army program in the Western Hemisphere, uh, south of North America. The Salvation Army has a great past in Haiti, uh, and a lot of people aren't aware that even in a small island country, the Salvation Army is presently operating 48 schools. We have 60 people, we have 6,000 soldiers, and uh, in spite of unthinkable heartache, um, the future is bright. The future is bright, and we have a large world services um, connection around the world through the Salvation Army that is going to make sure that that happens. One of the things that we want to consider in any future investment in Haiti at this particular time is what we're calling a Build Back Better. And we're going to build back better anything that we do in Haiti. Um, this was a natural disaster, the earthquake of January 12th. But more than that, it was a disaster because of the poverty and the broken systems that represented Haiti before the earthquake. In the city of Port-au-Prince, uh, uh, it's estimated that there are many Half of the homes were either damaged or destroyed. Self-denial implies giving without expecting anything in return. But the interesting thing is that when we give according to God's goodness, according to His word, He always blesses us back. Many of the programs that we will be implementing in the next few years uh, have a more integrated approach of supporting families, but also helping families with uh, vocational training ability to generate income. So it's not just a matter of, as we say in the Salvation Army, a hand out, but really we need to be more about giving people a hand up. The Haitian people um, are people filled with so much hope and uh, buried somewhere in the midst of all of this calamity, they still have a speck of hope. And um, the Salvation Army wants to be a part of that. And so I would just thank the Salvationists around the world who have given to uh, this great historic moment for Haiti, and I would also challenge the Salvation Army uh, to continue to partner uh, at your local level, wherever that might be. Um, it's a win-win situation, as we said, when you give, you get back, and um, we invite you to be a part of this process where we can participate together uh, for the glory of God. There is a God of hope. Uh, there is a God who loves us. Uh, and the psalmist said, you know, the Lord is the refuge of and it's our responsibility to be alongside those who are suffering.